Good day to Melangen Sanbonani from our studios here in South Africa. This is Mariki Bothma. Undomza Mazulu. Zintli Domza KZN coming to you with our news bulletin. You are watching non full Flex South Africa right now. Now in our news today, firstly we would like to say Happy African Day. Yesterday we celebrated Africa and also being African, we're saying uh, hope wherever you are in the world you celebrated it with us. In our uh, news bulletin today, taxi bosses plead with new MEC Dalen Mitchell to help cool the taxi killings. Taxi bosses are pleading for newly appointed transport and public works MEC Dalen Mitchell to help them cool the scourge of taxi killings in the province. Premier Alan Winder has appointed Mitchell as the new MEC after the resignation of Bungosi Matigizela amid the outrage over his qualifications on his CV. SA National Taxi Council Provincial Spokesperson Gershon Geyer welcomed the appointment. Geyer said he hopes Mitchell can assist them with eradicating the violence in the province and in the industry. He also hoped uh, he could bring in parliament and subsidies to transform the taxi industry. Cape uh, Amalgamated uh, Taxi Association Carter Secretary Mandla Hermana said they were hoping Mitchell would uh, tackle the transport issue with the same vigor that was displayed by Matigizela. Congress for Democratic Taxi Association spokesperson Andy Lekani said their first priority was to deal with the violence and killings in the industry. Kanye said that Mitchell could also help eradicate violence in the taxi industry. Now in our next story, the KZN ANC to rally against inclusion of polyandra in Marriage Act. The ANC PEC in KwaZulu-Natal slammed the aspect allowing for polyandra in the newly gazetted Green Paper for the Marriage Act published by the Department of Home Affairs earlier this month saying that there was no convincing explanation for the polyandra. The party's provincial secretary, Dumisen Induli, was earlier at pains to explain that their opposition uh, to polyandry was not in defense of polygamy, but that polyandry was not a contribution to fighting patriarchy faced by women in South Africa. Nduli said that this was not in any way introducing an intervention that is required in terms of addressing the plight of South African women. Nduli was speaking during a media briefing following the meeting of the ANC's Provincial Executive Committee, the PEC, over the weekend. He said he believed that they must not be diverted away from that, saying that they must deal with the oppression of women by virtue of being African black women. The KwaZulu-Natal uh, ANC is still firmly behind Zuma as he heads back to court today. The ANC in KwaZulu-Natal has uh, stood by its decision to support former President Jacob Zuma during his arms deal trial appearance at the Peter Meritzburg Division of the High Court, with the party's provincial leaders also confirming their presence at tomorrow's trial. In a media briefing earlier, following a meeting of the Provincial Executive uh, Committee of the ANC over the weekend, Provincial Secretary Mdumseni Duli said the structure had expressed a serious concern about a widespread distortion with, uh, within regards to its position on Zuma's matter. Now, the PEC said it understood the purpose of the distortion as a deliberate effort to divide the African National Congress and weaken its leadership role in society. They added that essentially this is a part of the board offensive strategy to divide the biggest province of the ANC and ultimately defeat the objectives of the ANC. The PEC also said it believes that ANC must look beyond what is seemingly a simple matter of deliberately telling falsehoods about the occurrence of known events and taking time to analyze these. Now, in our next story, we go to Eastern Cape 
as arm wrestled, uh, as the ANC arm wrestled one million donation for the EOH inquiry hearings. The ANC and the Eastern Cape arms wrestle a one million donation from technical services company EOH Holdings before a tender was awarded to a consortium linked to the company in 2016. The Zonda Commission heard on Tuesday. The Commission heard explosive evidence on Tuesday from the Managing Director of ENS Forensics, Stephen Powell. Powell had conducted a forensic investigation into EOH and in the process found payments made to the ANC individuals linked to the party. On Tuesday afternoon, Powell dealt with a series of payments made on behalf of the ANC into the Eastern Cape. Some of the expenses included hotel accommodation for a PGC conference the province was hosting in 2015. The requests for payments were made to EOH, which at the time had applied for an Eastern Cape Provincial Government Education Tender for records restoration worth $217 million. A former EOH executive, uh, Yahan McKay, was noted making communication with Zizi Gautwa, who at the time served as ANC spokesperson. McKay referenced uh, Gautwa to a series of requests from ANC Eastern Cape officials who sent continuous invoices. One invoice dealt with requests for payments for accommodation for over 600 people at a bed and breakfast. Now, as we know, COVID, a uh, third wave, is striking many countries but uh, in South Africa, 89 alleged COVID fraud cases are being probed. The Acting Unemployment Insurance Fund, UIF Commissioner Marsha Bronkost, uh, says 89 cases are being investigated relating to the COVID-19 Temporary Employment and Employee Relief Scheme, TERS. She was addressing the Standing Committee on Public Accounts on Tuesday. Committee Chair Nkuleg Ohlengwa said the UIF has at the center of attention for all the wrong reasons. Bronkost indicated that the cases have been referred to the SA Police Services, the Hawks and the Fusion Center. He said that of these cases, 14 employers have appeared before court, but the court cases are still being finalized, which have not received convictions as yet. According to Bronkost, recovery payments uh, amounting to 2.2 billion have already been paid to the UIF on a voluntary basis by employers. He added that they are audited payments to the value of 16.7 billion thus far. Of this amount auditing, they said they have identified 628 million that was incorrectly and fraudulently claimed and refunded to the UIF or workers entitled to this. Uh, she said that not all the repayments to the funds were because of wrongdoing. She said at the beginning of TERS, the internal controls were found lacking. Now, in another very saddening story, an outcry after a schoolboy dumped on the side of the road for not having a taxi fare. KwaZulu Natal is in an outrage uh, as there has been widespread community outrage over the five year old boy that was dumped on the side of the road in Kanelands near Verulam for not having any taxi fare. The little boy situation was highlighted by the private security company Reaction Unit South Africa, RUSA, on Monday, who went to his aid. According to RUSA, the grade R pupil was dumped in Cunnelands after he informed the driver of the minibus taxi that he did not have his fare to pay for his trip home from school. He was found crying on the side of the road by residents of Station Park in Cunnelands who called RUSA. Reaction Unit South Africa officers who went to the boy's location put out an alert on their social media for information on the boy after he was unable to provide officers with any information on where he stayed, his parents' details, or which school he attended. Do go to our social media and do tell us what you think of this case. Now, in another story, um, an 18-year-old accused of murdering her girlfriend to get psychiatric report, a woman accused of murdering her 18-year-old girlfriend by allegedly attempting to cut her head off 
has been sent for a second psychiatric report nearly four years after the incident took place. Corinne Jackson, 23, has been arrested and charged for the murder of her estranged girlfriend, Nadine Esterheisen, 18, who was in matric in 2017 at Athlone High. During a formal bail application, Jackson claimed she acted in self-defense after she was found inside a house in Colorado Park Mitchell's Plain where the body of Esther Hazen was discovered. Jackson had locked herself into the toilet and was found with two daggers. She claimed she had acted in self-defense and suffered wounds, but was placed on suicide watch at that time. Now, as we had celebrated Africa Day yesterday, continent fighting for access to vaccines, uh, economic relief. The celebration of Africa Day comes amid the continent's fighting with its back against the wall for access to vaccines and economic relief imposed in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic. In addition, the Pan-African Parliament, the legislative arm of the African Union, AU, is expected to elect new leadership in Johannesburg this coming week. PAP spokesperson Jeffrey Oganga said that the body had been calling for more action to combat COVID-19 on the African continent as a whole. This comes amid some criticism that the AU have been slow to create access to vaccines across Africa and fulfill its continental strategy for COVID-19. Speaking at the PA Democratic Republic of Congo's ambassador to South Africa, Bene Mboko, said not realizing self-reliance detrimental to the continent. Additionally, he stated that Africa was highly talented and more than capable of producing its own vaccines. In a last story this morning, um, our thoughts go to Congo. As we know, the volcano eruption that took place in Congo, and um, it is expected that there will be more, uh, another uh, volcanic uh, reaction in the next coming day. So if you are around in Congo, please do take care of yourself and your families and know that the whole world is watching and is with you. Well, this is Mariki Bothma and Tom Zamazulu from our studios in South Africa. Do you follow us on Unful Flex uh, on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and do please comment on our news bulletins and tell us what is your opinion. We would love to hear from you. This is Mariki Bothma and Tom Zamazulu saying goodbye and God bless. <laughs>